This is Queen Square in the heart of central London. The British Museum is in the adjacent square and the Thames a short walk to the south. The building you see is the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery, where in February 1886, Victor Horsley was appointed to take on and develop the newly described brain surgery, thus becoming the first appointed neurosurgeon in the history of our specialty. The hospital was founded, there was no call for brain surgery. It was considered highly dangerous, even unethical with the use of inhalational anesthesia and the use of antisepsis, which significantly reduced fatal post-operative infections. The perception that brain operations were dangerous changed in the five years prior to Horsley's appointment. A general surgeon in Glasgow, Scotland, William McEwen, performed a series of craniotomies for brain lesions principally caused by TB and syphilis. In 1884, in a much publicised operation, a prominent London general surgeon, Sir Rickman Godley, was persuaded to operate on a man with hemiparesis and severe headache. The patient turned out to have an intrinsic brain tumour. His operation sparked an interest in brain surgery, such that the Board of Governors at Queen Square advertised a post the following year. In the second half of the 19th century, the earliest pioneers in neurosurgery were dominated by an outstanding character, an archetypal surgeon scientist who preferred to spend his time in the lab, yet put out a prodigious surgical output. His name was Sir Victor Horsley. Who was this Victor Horsley whom the Board of Governors had appointed? He was only 28, son of a well-respected court artist. In the three years since he qualified as a doctor, he'd already proved himself and held a junior staff surgeon's position at his teaching hospital, University College, as well as an assistant professorship in pathology where he performed many of the autopsy. But most significantly, he was the professor superintendent of the Brown Institution, London University's Animal Experimental Laboratories. Here Horsley had conducted some of the brain localization experiments who had already been given Britain's highest scientific award Fellowship of the Royal Society at the early age of 27. In May 1886, at Queen Square, he did his first brain operation on a man with intractable epilepsy from a depressed skull fracture. It was a brilliant success, and within the year, Horsley had gone on to perform 10 more craniotomies, and there was only one death in a moribund boy with a posterior fossa tumor. By the end of 1887, he'd also performed the first spinal tumor operation, removing an extramedullary lesion from a paralyzed man who went on to make a significant recovery. He'd already published monographs on surgical brain techniques and anesthesia. But Horsley was also a genius for invention. He quickly established a new surgical approach using a large curved skin flap rather than the poorly healing cruciate incisions he also used decompressive craniotomies, often in two stages, to cope with brain swelling long before the introduction of steroids. And he had a profound knowledge of brain anatomy and used electrical stimulation at operation to localize important areas. Perhaps his most famous invention was his bone wax, which is still in use today. Horsley did everything extraordinarily quickly. Once inside the skull, he was very gentle. He trained surgeons from all over Britain, Europe, and even America, and spoke frequently at surgical and medical meetings. By the turn of the century, he described a number of surgical approaches, such as for trigeminal neuralgia, and had made the first operations for pituitary tumors, particularly the first published operation for acromegaly in 1895. Perhaps most importantly, he'd reported in Berlin in 1900 a series of 44 glioma operations with a mortality of only 10%, when German neurosurgeons such as Erstrid Furster were reporting a 50% death rate. He also described the carotid tie for brain apoplexy, which was how subarachnoid hemorrhage was described. Horsley was the creator of skull-based surgery, epilepsy surgery, spine tumor surgery, and vascular neurosurgery. In 1906, he made his most significant advance in neurosurgery when, with his collaborator Clark, he invented the first stereotactic frame. He only used it to make lesions in the monkey cerebellum and never used it in humans, but his American pupil, Ernest Sachs of New York, could afford to have a second machine made, which he took back with him on his return to the States. 
It is from this machine that the whole discipline of stereotaxy derives, and which broadly covers the entirety of cranial neurosurgery. The young Harvey Cushing made sure that in 1900, the first man he was to visit was Horsley. Cushing was to go on to pay tribute to Horsley in 1922, when he recognized Horsley's importance as the father of neurosurgery. Horsley died tragically young. He'd intended to retire at 60 and devote his life to politics. He was a powerful supporter of the suffragettes, the movement for the emancipation of British women, and other equality issues. He was just 59 when he died from heat exhaustion and typhus while serving in the British Army Medical Corps during the World War I in Iraq. He's remembered today as a great innovator who initiated many of the surgical disciplines of neurosurgery which we still carry out today.